guys and welcome to another Brewing Fundamentals video. Today we're going to be discussing yeast starters. Um, this is something that was confusing to me when I first started brewing and I hope in this video to be able to explain everything to you um, such that the whole yeast starter um, thing and how to make one and everything is basically demystified for you guys. So first of all, what is a yeast starter? So a yeast starter is basically just a method for increasing the number of yeast cells that you have to the point where you have an optimal pitch rate uh, going into your beer. This is mainly for liquid yeast. You don't really need to do this for dry yeast because dry yeast, you just put more dry yeast in. It's more cost efficient to actually just increase the amount of dry yeast you're using. Liquid yeast is fairly expensive, um, especially if you start doing you know, 10 gallon batches and it's a high gravity beer. You know, you're looking at three, four packs of liquid yeast, which can, you know, depending on where you are, can run you upwards of $30, $40. So it's much more cost effective to buy one and then through the method we're going to talk about, increase that cell count to the point where you have the equivalent of four packs to put into the beer. Uh, so it's much more cost efficient that way. So first of all, let's talk about the optimal pitch rate for a beer. So most conventions for what the optimal pitch rate um, for the number of cells of yeast is 0.75 million yeast cells times the number of milliliters of wort that you have times degree Play-Doh. And that's a measure of the, um, the gravity basically of the beer. Um, most people are more familiar with um, specific gravity but um, Play-Doh is another measurement basically that you can use um, to determine that. So don't get too hung up on this, but basically what I want to get across to you guys is there is an optimal pitch rate. Now luckily we have calculators like Mr. Malty, which takes this equation into account and can actually take a lot of the complexity out of it and just help us get a better sense of what we're actually working with. So. In my case, I'm making a beer that's about a 1057 is what I'm anticipating. And we're going to be making an 11 gallon batch. Now, the, the date on my yeast, and this is very important because the viability of yeast drops off with time. Um, you're never going to get 100% viability because that's basically when they package it. I know based on my date that's on my yeast that I have about 75% viability right now. Now, if you look at the Y-Yeast Smack Packs and the, uh, the White Labs vials, what they advertise is 100 billion cells of yeast per pack. Now, because I know I have 75% viability, basically what I know I actually have is 75 billion, um, is what I'm going to be basically trying to increase. Now, if you go to a calculator like Mr. Malty, this is the app for Android, although you can go to right to the Mr. Malty website and I'll have a link to that in the video description. It basically has all the same functionality. So if you look at the different amounts, um, the different tabs here, you can see there's a liquid yeast one, dry yeast, and a repitch. We're just going to be talking about the liquid yeast today. And there's also the starter type, so depending on what you do, if you do just a simple starter, which is basically set it and forget it, um, it's not quite as effective as if you shake it every once in a while. We're actually going to be doing the intermittent shaking method. If you have are lucky enough to have a stir plate, oxygen, or some kind of continuous aeration system, you can definitely select those. But for now, we're going to be doing basically a shake every hour or so of the, um, the small container we're making the yeast um, starter in. So we know 1057, 11 gallons. Now you can see here that it's telling us that we need 436 billion, okay? We have 75, so you can see there is a problem. Now, now that we have this data crunched in here, you can see basically what it's telling us is if we did not um, do a starter at all, we need 5.8 packs, so basically six packs of liquid yeast. Um, the thing that it's telling us is with the starter, we're still gonna need two packs. And this growth rate thing is something you can play with. Um, if you move it to the left, basically what you're doing is a smaller starter with more uh, initial packs of yeast. If you move it all the way to the right, it's basically the biggest starter you can make with the least number of um, packs of yeast. Now you can see here, 
if I were to do this, I'd have a one pack, but I need to make almost a 10 liter starter, which is almost a quarter of my batch, which that's a problem. So if you were gonna do, say for example, a, let's say we're gonna do a five gallon batch, okay? I would only need to do a one and a half liter starter, um, one pack of yeast, perfect. So you can see in this case, it'd be a simple make a starter um, of this size, 1.56, dump the yeast into it, let it ferment out for a little bit to get that cell count up, and we'd be done. But because we're doing a large batch, we need to talk about two-stage starters. Now, multi-stage starters are not more complicated than single-stage starters when you really break it down. Essentially, you're just doing a number of single stages in sequence. So basically, you're gonna do one stage, let the yeast grow, then you're gonna add more fresh starter, and the yeast will continue to grow until you end up with your final amount. Now, so, let's just see this here for a second. So we know 11 gallons, we're gonna have way too much starter, that's way too large. So basically one of the tricks of Mr. Malty, and this is something that you're kind of hacking the calculator to do, is you can actually reduce this down to, um, to end up with a single stage that's smaller. So let me show you what I mean. So if we put in, let's say 5.5 gallons in here, okay? This thing will tell us that, okay, after, kind of ignore this volume amount. What we're really concerned with is the number of yeast cells and the size of the starter that we would have. So if we were to do this first stage at 1.94 liters of starter, so that, let's just write, write this down. So first stage is saying 1.94 liters of starter. And we know that after the first stage, we have 218 billion. Now, if this was still too large, say we were doing a really high gravity beer, let's say we were doing like a 1090, you can play with the, the volume amount here until it makes sense for what you're doing. So if I were to say dial this to let's say maybe four, okay, so this would be a little bit more reasonable. This would be a 2.49 and I'd have this many billion yeast cells after that. But for our purposes, I'd say a 1.94 liter starter sounds good. A two liter starter is a pretty good size for a starter. So that's our first stage, so perfect. So let's put this back down here, 1057. So that's our, that's our first stage. Now, here's where the little bit of the hacking part gets into the calculator. We know that we have 218 billion after our first stage, but how do we tell Mr. Malty that? Well, the way you do that is by playing with this viability number, because remember, Mr. Malty is assuming 100 billion times percent viability. So if you actually put in 218 here for the uh, viability, you're tricking Mr. Malty into saying, I have 218 billion already, that's my starting point. So now, if we, let's, let's try to go full scale. So we're telling Mr. Malty we have 218 billion cells, let's see what it would take to go straight up to our 11 gallons. Okay, so at this point, stage two is saying it's only 2.93 liters. Uh, sorry, three nine liters, which that's that's perfect. That's right around two. So once we have that, we'll have 436 billion after stage two. Okay, perfect. So basically what we're, we're doing here is we're making a starter of 1.49 liters, starting with 75 billion cells. After that stage, we're gonna have 218. We're then gonna take the yeast that we've grown add an additional 2.93 liters, and we're gonna end up with 436. Now, like I said, um, I'm gonna have something after um, this whole video is done, just going into more of the theory, if you guys feel like this has been confusing. I'll go through two more examples, a single stage and a three stage, just to help explain it a little bit more. Um, but this is basically what we've done. So now, I've, I've talked about how big the starters need to be. Let's talk about what needs to actually go into the starter. To make a starter, it's actually pretty simple. Um, you want a starter of around 1.040 specific gravity. And the easy way to do this is do 100 grams of dry malt extract per liter of starter. 
that's just a really easy number because basically you just multiply the size of the starter by 100 grams. So for the first stage we need 194 grams in 1.94 liters of starter. And you know, you just measure that out, boil it up. Uh, you don't even need to add hops or anything like that. Second stage likewise would be 239 grams of DME. So I'm gonna basically go upstairs now and I'm going to basically just do a quick rundown of how to make this. It's pretty straightforward. Um, at this point, like I said, you just boil the DME with the amount of water and then you just pitch your yeast in. You obviously want to cool it and all that. Um, stage two, basically what I'm going to do is the stage one yeast I've grown, I'm going to put it in the fridge to help settle the yeast out to the bottom and then dump as much of the liquid out as I can and then add in 2.39 liters of additional starter. Let that go out and then um, same thing, cool it down. Um, and then dump out as much liquid as I can and basically pour that into my beer. So that's essentially what a yeast starter is. So like I said, I'll go through two more examples um, after the whole brewing part is done to explain the theory a bit more if it's still a little bit confusing to you guys. So let's go upstairs. All right, so now that we have all the math done on the, what the first stage needs to be, basically all we have to do at this point is measure out our water, put that in, bring it to the boil and then add our DME. So we're going to be putting in 1.94 liters of water to the pot. Basically two liters, 1.94, pretty much two. And we'll go ahead and bring that up to a boil. All right, so we're just up to the boil now. Um, I already have 200 grams of DME measured out, ready to go. So what I'm gonna actually do is just take this off the boil for the, for the time being, and uh, we'll go ahead and stir the DME in, and uh, we'll put it back on once that's done. And we'll put it back on. So we're gonna boil this for 10 minutes, um, just to basically get everything kind of sanitized and, and all that. And um, yeah, we will, uh, boil that and we'll come back and uh, we'll we'll do the next part and while that's going we've gone ahead and uh, sanitized we're gonna be using this one liter or sorry one liter one gallon um, carboy if you want to call it that I've got it filled with star sand uh, so that's going cool. you know sanitizing and then we're gonna go ahead and sanitize our funnel that we're gonna be using to transfer and also a good idea to sanitize the outside of the yeast package just to make sure that uh, you don't have any material or debris on here uh, that could potentially get into your starter. So we'll get everything sanitized. Okay, so we're done boiling here for 10 minutes. So we're gonna take this off the heat and we're gonna go ahead and, there's only about an inch or so of um, wort in here. So we're actually just gonna put this right in the uh, sink with some cold water and that should cool things down nicely for us. All right, while that's cooling, I've gone ahead and actually pulled just a sample <clears throat> off here to measure the gravity level with the refractometer. Um, this is something we haven't really talked about yet and I'm gonna be doing a video on it in the future, but I figured for the time being, I would just kind of show you guys um, the sample. So basically you just take um, your refractometer, if I can get this to focus for me, it doesn't really seem like it wants to, but um, anyway, so you just put um, about three to four drops on the mirror here. And in this case, it's fairly cooled already. Although if it's right out of the boil kettle, they recommend you leave it for 30 seconds or so just so the temperature kind of comes to the ambient. So you just basically put this little uh, part down and we'll just hold it towards a light source and see what we got. Ideally, you're supposed to do this with natural light, but yeah, so we're sitting right at about, so we're aiming for 1040, and we're sitting right at about 10 and a half Play-Doh, uh, which is approximately about 1042, so that's pretty good. And I'll actually hold this up to the camera, I'll see if you guys can even see this. It's going to be probably not the best image, but, so that's basically the, the scale that you have. You can see actually that line 
um, but you can't see it very well. But you can see we're hovering right around 10 on the Play-Doh, which there's a, actually a little gauge on the other side, so we're at about 1042. But um, we'll do a whole video on a refractometer, but just wanted to show you guys that we're hit, uh, based on our calculation, we're right at where we want to be for our gravity for our starter. So as soon as this is all the way cooled, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll continue. So the wart's nice and cooled down, so we've already got our jar sanitized, we've got the funnel sanitized also. Um, I've also went ahead and sanitized the yeast packet. So we're basically just going to dump the wart into the jar now. Alright, so now that we're all poured in there, we'll just open up our yeast and we'll go ahead and dump that right in. So I've already gone ahead and punctured the nutrient pack that's inside of here. So basically, yeah, what we're going to do, we're going to cover this up just with some sanitized tin foil over the top. It doesn't have to be anything really fancy. And um, because we selected with the starter method, continu or not continuous aeration, but intermittent shaking, about every hour or two we're going to go ahead and pick this up, give it a good old shake just to get the oxygen in there. Um, and yeah, in about 24 hours or so, we're going to move on to the second stage of this process. So I just wanted to go ahead and show you guys, it's been about um, 28 hours or so since we pitched the yeast uh, for the starter and uh, I've been monitoring the gravity with my refractometer so we basically reached the point um, where we're basically going to have as much growth as we're going to get for the yeast. So we're going to go ahead and actually cold crash this overnight and basically what that's going to do is all the yeast is going to settle to the bottom and then tomorrow we can um, dump out the wart that's on top and go ahead and pitch our stage two onto the top of the yeast cake that we've already uh, grown at this point. All right, so we've been sitting in the fridge overnight and you can basically see what's happened. So this has gone fairly clear. We basically have our layer at the bottom of our yeast. So essentially what we're gonna do now is we're gonna boil up our second batch of um, wort and then we're gonna basically dump out um, as much of this as we can without disturbing the yeast at the bottom and then pitch that on top and um, basically repeat the process. Alright, so we've got um, the wort is boiled and cooled, so basically what we're going to do now is we're just going to decant as much of this liquid off as we can. Again, it's you just pour gently, you're trying to basically not disturb uh, the yeast that's at the bottom. Obviously you're going to disturb some of it, but um, generally if you're pretty gentle, it should relatively all kind of stay. You guys can see basically I've gotten pretty well all of the liquid out of there except for the yeast. So basically what we'll do is we're going to pitch on top of this. So again like we did with the first stage we're going to shake this about every hour or so. And uh, given how fast the first stage fermented out, it was about 28 hours till I hit terminal gravity. Um, this one will probably take about that long as well. It might be a little faster because the cell count is a lot higher, but um, all things considered, it should be ready uh, to go with probably within a day or so. Um, I'll cold crash this one as well and then uh, decant that liquid off the top uh, before I go ahead and add it to uh, the beer. So we'll come back in a few days. All right, so here we are, guys. It's actually brew day. I'm just at the end of my brew day here, and um, we're ready to pitch our starter. So. It's actually been a, a week since um, phase two uh, of the starter ended. I actually ended up brewing a little bit later than I anticipated, but that's not a problem. Um, it's been basically sitting just at, at cellar temperatures. Um, I didn't chill this one down uh, before decanting, but um, if you were to brew phase two 
and you know have it finish um, like the night before you were going to brew, I would still recommend you chill it down like we did for phase one. So what we're going to do now basically is just as gently as we can, we're basically just going to decant as much of this liquid as possible. All right, perfect. So you can see we've got a nice, big, healthy yeast cake there at the bottom. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'll move this here so you can see this. So this is the beer that I just brewed. Uh, so what I'm actually gonna do is put some of it in here. Uh, this has been cooled already. And uh, just kind of be able to mix this up with that. And then we'll just pitch it basically into the beer. So it's pretty straightforward. You don't need a lot, just enough that you can basically swirl everything up and get everything nice and suspended so probably got about two inches there so we'll put about half about an inch in each That's probably about good for that one. And now yeah, I'll just put the, the next half in this uh, the second bucket that I have. And um, the fermentation should kick off very quickly for this one. All right, let's go through two more examples because um, it might have been a little bit confusing. It was for me. It took a few tries of seeing it to kind of make sense of it all. So let's say you guys were doing a... Um, a beer and you were anticipating a gravity of uh, 1.060 let's say you're making like a strong pale ale or something like that and um, you're making a six gallon batch let's see what what um, this would tell us so now let's let's uh, change this back we're not going to do the viability hack we're actually going to use the date on our yeast so let's say our yeast was uh, I don't know a month no not a month let's say it was a few weeks old or so so we had an 81% viability, and uh, we'll punch in the gravity and the volume size. And again, this is the same on the online version of the calculator. I just prefer the app, it's a little bit easier. Okay, perfect, so we need one pack of yeast and 2.39 liter starter, so easily. So basically what we do now is we would take 2.39 liters of water, we'd add in so we bring that to a boil, then we'd add in 239 grams of DME. You want to boil that for about 10 minutes or so. Uh, cool it down, and then you just add your yeast pack. You want to let it ferment out. Some yeast take a little bit longer. Um, just kind of watch the activity, but anywhere from about uh, one to three days is probably about right um, to reach your optimal cell count. Going a little bit longer doesn't hurt, certainly. Um, that's not, you know, as long as it's like not more than a week or two, uh, just like a beer. And then try to dump out as much of the liquid as you can. Putting it in the fridge really helps because it actually settles the yeast out to the bottom. And then, um, yeah, you would basically just end up. Um, one of the easy things that I did, as you saw in the video, was just to add some of the beer that I've made, swirl it up, and then dump that in. Really, really simple. So that's one example. That's just a single stage starter, quick and easy. So let's talk about a more complicated. Let's talk about a three stage starter, just so you guys can see again how the multi-stage part works. So let's say we had a, um, a beer that was like a big barley wine or something like that. So let's say we're talking, you know, 1095, and it was going to be an 11 gallon batch. So we're talking a lot of sugar here, need a lot of yeast. So if we put that in 1095 and 11 gallons, it won't even let you use one yeast pack. You can see that. Um, it's telling us even with two yeast packs, we need almost a 10 and a half liter starter. So that's crazy. So let's start going through the stages here. So again, what we're going to do, we're going to leave the gravity the same. We're just going to start playing with the volume number until it looks reasonable. So uh, if I put a volume of three gallons, you can see 1.29. We're trying to hit around two liters just because it's an easy, simple size. Maybe let's try three and a half there. All right, that looks good. So first stage 
is going to be 1.84 liters of starter. And after stage one, we're gonna have 223 billion yeast cells. Okay, that's, that's the first stage. So now that we know that, 223, let's use our viability hack. And again, because Mr. Malty assumes 100 billion times the viability percentage, again, if you remember percentages, um, really, really simple. We're basically telling Mr. Malty we have 223 billion now. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's try playing with our volume size again. Let's maybe try, I don't know, seven. We'll see. Uh, seven's a little big, maybe six point seven. Uh, seven was okay. Seven was not unreasonable. Um, two and a half liters is, is about fine. So now it's telling us again, 2.45 liters. And after that, we're going to have 446 billion. And again, this would just be 2.45 liters of water with 245 grams of DME. Real simple. Let's talk about our third stage now. Okay, so now we have 446. So again, we're gonna do our viability number hack. And what's gonna what's it gonna happen if we go straight to the 11 gallons? Let's see. Okay, 2.8 liters is a little big for a starter. You could do a fourth stage if you wanted to, but um, my vessel can actually hold that, so it's not too unruly. So we'll, we'll do 2.8 liters and we're gonna end up with 701 billion after that. So again, 2.8 liters of water with 280 grams of DME. And each of these stages, we're trying to dump out as much of the liquid as we can while leaving the yeast on bottom. Again, the fridge is great for that. And um, at the end, again, you dump out as much of the liquid as you can, leaving the yeast on the bottom, add in your beer, swirl it up and pitch right in. So. That's basically um, the liquid part. Just for the dry, I just wanna show you guys how this works, um, just so you can see it at least. So dry is really, really simple. Um, the nice thing about the dry is we basically just put in, um, let's, let's do this here. So you could technically use the date if you want on your yeast packet, but it's not too big of a deal. Um, dry yeast is pretty, pretty stable. It's not like liquid yeast where it degrades really fast. So if we were doing the 1095, basically what it's telling us is we would need 3.2 packs of 11 and a half grams, uh, which if I can do the math on this would be uh, 24.5. So what would that be? So we'd have 48, uh, 49. So we basically need 28.5, uh, no. Is that right? 29.4 grams, yeah. So that would basically, I think I did the math on that wrong, but you guys get the idea. <laughs> math is hard and it's late, but regardless, um, if you're buying yeast in the packs, you just get you know three of them. They're usually like a few bucks each. Um, if you're buying yeast, dry yeast in the 500 gram bricks, which is a really great way to do it if you have a homebrew club or something, um, you'd obviously just measure out as much as you need. So I hope that makes sense. Um, if you guys are still unclear on anything, or if you'd like me to go into more detail, just post a uh, question in the comments section. Again, I'm gonna have the link to Mr. Malty in the description. So um, I hope you guys found this helpful. That's yeast starters in a nutshell. You know, not too complicated. Basically just once you figure out how to use the calculator and um, how to get, you know, the multi-stage thing going, you know, I hope, Hope I've made sense of it for you guys. So thanks for watching. Again, if you uh, comment, like, um, and subscribe and all that, share the video, it really helps us out. And uh, we appreciate you watching. So thank you very much. Uh, this is Kyle from Mallcast signing off.